Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. The word problems that we'll do today, problem number 127, as you can see, is already on the blackboard, and problem number 128. They are, they are word problems, the so-called word problems, but they are very simple, very straightforward problems. Let's take a look at them. First 127 and then 128, which is just as straightforward and simple. It says find a number, find a number such that the third of third, third and the ninth part add up to 20, uh, add up to 20. So let's do it then. So if you take a number, let's call it x, the unknown quantity. If you take a third of it, and then if you take the ninth of it, and if you take their sum, we are told that they add up to 20. They add up to 20. What can we do next? Well, we have to have common denominator. This one has a denominator of 3. This one has a denominator of 9. This one has a denominator of 1. We need to have common denominator. The common denominator here is going to be 9. This one is only 9. How can we make this 3 into a 9? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is just 1. So when you multiply some quantity, which is x over 3, by 3 over 3, which is just a 1, multiplying some quantity by 1 doesn't actually change it. Similarly here, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 9 over 9. Now, everything has a denominator of 9. Since everything has the same denominator, all the terms on the right-hand side, or rather, all the terms on the left-hand side and the term on the right-hand side, they both have the same denominator, we can ignore the denominator. That's all. 3 times x, which is 3x, plus x would have to equal 20 times 9. 3x three, three plus x is 4x equals 20 times 9, and therefore x would have to equal 20 times 9 over 4. Divide top and bottom by 4, and 20 becomes 5. That, that means that x is 5 times 9, which is 45. The very last thing we have to do is to make sure that our work is correct. Verify it very quickly. It only takes a second. Just verify it. It only takes 5 seconds. The third of 45. We are claiming that the x, the unknown quantity, is 45. If we were to take a third of it, which is 15, and then if we were to take a ninth of it, 45. If we were to take a ninth of it, 9 to 45 is 5. Do 5 and a 15, add up to 20. Do 5 and a 15, add up to 20, as the problem tells us that, 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 that they should. The answer is yes. The, the third of the number and the ninth of the number, the third and the ninth part, do add up to 20, which means our answer is correct. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Find a number such that, find a number such that, such that the sum, such that the sum of its third sixth and the tenth parts is 36. So as you can clearly see, it's the same exact type of problem as the one that we just finished. The only complication is that it has, now we have to deal with three quantities, but that's not a big deal. It's still the concept, the notion, the math methodology remains the same, obviously. So let's do it then. So now we have to deal with three quantities. Let's call again the unknown quantity x. And we are told that if you were to take the sum of its third and the sum of the sixth of the number and the tenth, if you were to take their sum, they should add up to 36. All we have to do is simplify, or all we have to do is solve this very simple, straightforward linear equation. Let's do that, shall we? Again, as always, we need the common denominator here. What is going to be the common denominator here? We have 3, 6, and a 10. 3, 6, and a 10. Least common multiplier is what we're looking for. So divide by 3, which is 1 and a 2, and we get a 10 here. Here we have a 2 and a 10. Let's divide by 2. This remain, this one comes down, this becomes 1, and this becomes 5. And that's the end of our story. The least common multiplier here is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. We need a common denominator of 30 throughout. So let's do that, shall we? We're going to make the denominator 
of each and every term in this equation, 30. This one has a 3. We need to make it 30. So let's multiply that by 10 over 10. So that part is done. This one has a denominator of 6. We need 30. So let's multiply this quantity by 5 over 5. That's done. This one has a denominator of 10. Let's multiply it by 3 over 3. So that one has a denominator of 30. 3 times 10. And this one needs to have a denominator of 30. So we'll multiply it by 30 over 30. We haven't changed anything. We haven't changed anything because the left hand side was 36. It is still 36. It is still 36 because all we have done is that we have multiplied this 36 by 1. Except the 1 is incognito. 30 over 30 is 1. Multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change anything. Does it? So there we go. Now we have a common denominator of 30 throughout the entire equation. Which means we can ignore it. It plays no role anymore. It ceases to play role. It, is, it ceases to be significant. So all we have to do now is to start collecting things together. 10 times x is going to be 10x plus 5 times x is going to be 5x plus 3 times x is going to be 3x and that has to equal 36 times 30. I need the room so I'm going to erase this work and that has to equal 36 times 30. Let's see what we can do there. 5 5 plus 10 is 15, 15 plus 3, 3 is 18. So 18x, 18x equals 36 times 30. I'm going to do it over here now, which means x equals 36. Or we can continue here, if you like. We can just continue here, just sort of making a fuss about it. Divide both sides by 18. And 18 goes away. And here is our x. How much is our x? Well, let's find out. We have 36 on the top. We have 18 at the bottom. We know 18 times 2 is 36. 2 18s are 36. Divide top and bottom by 18. 18 goes away and 36 becomes 2, which means x that we're looking for is 2 times 30, which is 60. Which is what we're claiming, which is what our answer is, which is what we claim the answer is. We need to verify it. As always, we need to verify it. We're going to take 5 seconds, as always, to verify our work. So let's do that. We are claiming that the quantity, the unknown quantity, is 60. And if you were to take a third of it, third of the 60 is 20. And if you were to take a sixth of it, sixth of the 60 is 10. And if you were to take tenth of it, tenth of 60 is 6. Do 20 and a 10 and a 6 add up to 36 as the problem tells us that it should? Well, let's find out, shall we? 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 plus 6 is 36. Actually, they do indeed add up to 36. Our answer turns out to be correct. Lucky for us. Bye now.